Jew against the world. I lived and uh, worked with the church in Mexico for three years, and I loved it, three of the greatest years of my life. However, I was terrified of the police in Mexico. Heard a lot of stories, had a lot of experiences with them, and sometimes it was terrifying. I remember once in a cab, and the cab driver and I started talking about the federalists who were their federal police. And this is what he told me. He said, son, if you're ever stopped by federal, and do whatever they tell you, or your mama will never know what happens. So uh, I was scared most of the time I lived in Mexico. Uh, and I will tell you that my prayer life was never better than I lived in Mexico. Uh, and on one particular day, uh, I was driving through Mexico City, kind of a real prime area for getting stopped by police officers who wanted to bribe. And uh, I didn't do anything wrong. As I said this morning at 8.30, I haven't lived in Miami yet, so I wasn't used to running red lights or anything like that. Uh, so I, I had driven very carefully because I was so afraid of the police uh, in Mexico. I'm not afraid of the police here. I was in Mexico. And uh, I uh, was pulled over, and they told me that I had run two red lights, which I had not. And uh, they really uh, read the riot act to me. There were two motorcycle police officers. And all I said to them was, take me to the judge. Uh, and I had been taught that, that those were the magic words, that if you did them long enough, they would get frustrated and leave you alone. So uh, the, the more he talked to me, uh, the more he threatened me, I just responded with, take me to the judge. Take me to the judge. Take me to the judge. And it seemed like 20 minutes or more. Finally, with a gleam in his eye, he turned back to his partner and said, let's take him to the judge. And at that point, I wasn't really sure where they were going to take me. Uh, so then I, I was really scared. And uh, he, had on, he had these white gloves that he had put in his belt. And, and he continued to kind of harass me as he put on that, those gloves. I can just remember how particular he was to pull on each finger. And I was thinking, Lord, I'm going to die. You know? <laughs> and as he did that, so dramatically, he turned to get on his motorcycle. And he ran face first into this very beautiful young Mexican senorita who had on those mirrored sunglasses. And, of course, he got very, he, it kind of shook him up a little bit. And he was very polite to her. And she said, sir, I've been standing on that corner over there. And I have watched you harass and abuse this guest to our nation. But, but, but he did it. I'm sorry, sir. I've been watching. I watched the whole thing. I watched when you pulled him over. He didn't do anything wrong. I've watched you abuse him now this entire time. He is a visitor to our nation, and you're abusing him. Well, I stick my head out of him about that time and ask, can I leave now, sir? He was so caught up with her that he didn't respond. So I waited a couple more minutes as she continued to just eviscerate him with her words. And something I should tell you is she told him, by the way, I'm an attorney here in Mexico City. <laughs> uh, so uh, he, he was quaking in his boots as much as I had been in mine. And I finally turned to him another time and said, sir, may I leave now? Yes, sir. Uh, visitor to our nation. You may leave now, but please be careful and don't run any more stoplights. Sir, I haven't run the first one yet. So I had to go around the, this big block to get back in traffic. And when I did, the police officers had disappeared and gone their own way. And she was walking up the street. And I stopped and I thanked her. Didn't have enough mind uh, to uh, invite her to dinner or anything at that point. Uh, I wasn't dating anyone, and she sure was beautiful, but I was too shy for that. And I did stop and thank her. And as I thought about that incident, how alone I felt, and uh, nobody knew where I was, uh, nobody knew what was going on with me, God knew. And, and whether she was an angel or not, I've always thought that God placed her there at that exact moment in time to rescue me. And she rescued me by getting involved and making sure I was not alone. Uh, 
Uh, and the thing about it is, whenever we feel alone, God is always with us. But also, I think God wants to use us to help those who feel like they're all alone. It's them against the world. And think about some ways that you might be able to do that. I am thrilled to have so many beautiful children at my side today. Thank you for being here. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for these veritable treasures uh, sitting around me, and I entrust them into your care. And I ask that you bless them and protect them and keep them from all harm. And Lord, as they grow in wisdom and in stature and in grace, may they come to encounter you and to see just how faithful you are. And may they have open eyes to see how you work miracles uh, in their presence all the time. Jesus, I commit them into your care. And in your holy name we pray and trust. Amen. Amen. God bless you. It's great to have you with us today. You can go back to your seat.